I'm going to talk about putting tips on the ends of catheters. So kind of a summary of what I want to talk about is kind of basics of how we join catheters and how we form tips on them with a variety of ways. Uh, the issues that can come about in terms of bonding and tipping uh, during the design phase, uh, the basic processes that we use to do these procedures, the tooling that's available for each of them, and then kind of a summary of different equipment options and why you would use one over another for a certain application. So first I want to talk about why we need tips. Uh, often the catheters are designed to be very stiff with uh, braid and ability to push and torque them and they don't make very good soft tips when they come in contact with the artery or vein since that hard material can kind of cut into the material and so we would like them to be soft and rounded and very uh, easy on the anatomy that we're going into. Also, there's a need in many cases to have a very smooth transition. Uh, on the upper right-hand side, you can see the catheter against the needle. And in that case, we want it very tapered and to fit very snugly on the needle so that it, as it penetrates through the skin, it reduces pain going in and also in some cases to prevent leakage around that so that it's sealed. Secondly, many times the most important part of a catheter is knowing where it is under a fluoroscope and so there's a need to put some kind of markers into the tip and make them part of it. Uh, we also use uh, catheters to expand the tissue and so they can be shaped and tapered so when you push it in it will open up the uh, tissue and also for special functions on the bottom right photo you can see a catheter tip that has a needle that comes out the side of it and another guide wire that goes through the length of it and this incorporates also a marker band that's the shape of a flag so that you can see it in, in fluoroscope not only where it is uh, along the length of the catheter but also rotationally so that you can see by looking at that flag which way the needle is pointed. Probably the biggest uh, issue in tipping catheters especially if you want to join a soft material to a hard material is compatibility of those two and allowing it to bond and the higher the difference in hardness for example if you have a very hard PBAX urethane and you want to attach the softest urethane, you can't get a good bond to them because of the difference in hardness. So sometimes you use an intermediate hardness between them as a transition layer to be able to get that good strength. Also, there can be special treatments and inserts to go non-compatible. In the bottom uh, left of this screen you can see a tip that's bonded. It's a high density polyethylene part and it has tungsten powder in it to make it radiopaque and then it's bonded to the base material and formed to be smaller on the OD and the ID. On the right hand side is an application where we bonded a Teflon catheter to a silicone rubber tip. And this was done by uh, hydrofluoric acid etching of the Teflon and using some internal brads or cores inside to mechanically trap it. And we were able to get enough strength out of that joint that you could stretch the silicone and actually break it without uh, damaging the bond. Other issues, uh, many times these are very thin walled catheters and it makes it more difficult to bond those very thin areas. And obviously strength is critical on tips. Uh, the last thing you want in a cardiovascular system is a tip coming off and going into the heart and causing some kind of problem. And then finally, uh, many of these catheters have wire braid in them as illustrated in this uh, picture. And you need to terminate those wires because as you heat them to bond the tip on, 
they will come delaminated and open up and come to the surface. And so you can weld them together or solder them. Or in this case, we used a marker band over the outside to trap the end of those and then bonded a thin wall tube on the end with another marker band incorporated into the molded tip. So now I thought I'd talk about basics of bonding and shaping and they both are very similar. Basically you have to heat the materials so that they melt and then you need a force to push them together so that you get a good uh, contact in that interface and some mixing of the two materials and then finally cool it while you hold it under force to freeze it and hold it in position. And with tip shaping it's the same process of melting and then moving the material into the shape of a die that has the kind of configuration you want and then a cooling it again to solidify it. So some of the process considerations that we think are important. Uh, one of the most critical things is that variations in the base tubing diameter can have big effects on being able to form tips or make joints. If the catheter is slightly too big, just by a thousandth of an inch, you can't get it in the die. And if it's too small, it goes in easy and you get flash or you get you don't get good compression of the material because it doesn't fill the mold. So many times the, it pushes the ability of the extruder to make these precision tolerances. Also there's difficulty sometimes in removing the mandrels or the, the molded tips from the, the dies because they tend to stick. I mentioned holding braid wire in place while you're while you're forming a tip and integrating metal markers. Another area that's important is trapped air when you're forming a tip. As we want a very thin wall tip, we have to allow that air to go out as it flows in. But if we have too much of a gap, you get flash out of the plastic instead of getting a fully formed tip. We also often want to shape both the inside of the catheter to be smaller as well as the outside. And if it's a very long catheter and you have to bring a mandrel all the way down to form that taper, it becomes complicated and difficult. And finally, the bonding requires a force between the tip material and the catheter to get a good bond. And so that interaction at exactly the right time is very important. So some of the tooling considerations, the easiest is just using FEP shrink tubing. You put a mandrel in the catheter, put the shrink tubing around it, compress the material, meld it, and bond it. And it has a limit that it's hard to form special shapes that way. Most often these are made with an external die and a mandrel that can be a glass die or electroless nickel or in some cases machine tool steel. It's important to have a very good surface finish on that so that you get good release as you want to pull the catheter out of the, the die. And in some cases we use release agent lubricants that go in there that help that process. And of course every customer says no release agents, we don't want that for biocompatibility. But there are a few that are commercially used for uh, uh, catheters and certainly meet biocompatibility. So the considerations when you want to select a process or a system really relate to speed, how fast you can make it and how much labor it takes how accurately you control the temperature in that interface area where you're melting it, how well you can localize that temperature to the, just the area you want to bond, and of course the, the faster it is, the more accurate it is, the more expensive it is for equipment. And pretty much all of these processes require motion axially when you're heating it to make the bond and the shape. 
So the simplest and, and probably most used is a hot box. Uh, this illustrates a, uh, a heated uh, flange where you can inject hot air or cool air. And in this case, it shows a piece of uh, FEP shrink tubing on it. It can be heated, shrunk down, and then cold air blown on it to take it out. Or it can be a glass die or a, an electroless nickel die. The electroless nickel is typically used because they can form it to very thin walls with very high surface finish. Another way to do the heating part of it is with RF heating, which is a coil that will be around the outside of the die, and the, the RF uh, current in it heats the very small center of the die in a very precise location. Typically that's a 420 stainless steel. In some cases, lasers are used to do this heating, and in this case, it's uh, a focused energy location that's very accurate in temperature, but typically it requires rotating the catheter because you can't put a circumferential laser heating area around the outside. And it requires some kind of intimate contact between the two materials so that you're heating that interface. And finally, it's, it's relatively high capital cost. Another area that we've developed at, at our company is to do injection molding of these tips. We have a special machine that was developed for a very small shot volume, and it has a lot of material flexibility of what we can mold, as well as obviously a high capital cost, but relatively, relatively rapid speed. So these show some examples of molded tips and the versatility of shapes. Uh, in the upper left is a, is a catheter tip that's about one and a half millimeter in diameter and about a centimeter long. We can mold in marker bands, as you can see here, or overmold tips onto catheters in various shapes. This is a summary kind of the different processes. I've tried to estimate the capital equipment involved in each, the tooling cost, and how the, each process measures up in terms of cycle speed and the flexibility of the shapes of tips and, and joints that you can make. And you can see that if you want very fast, high cycle speed, you go towards the laser or molding process and kind of intermediate is RF heating because it's so localized you can cool it much faster than you can with hot air. And so which process depends heavily on what your volume of product is and how important the uh, balance between labor and investment cost is. So kind of in summary, bonding and shaping tips, they all require heat to melt the material, motion to get the contact or shape, and cooling. And the process that you select kind of depends on the, the volume of your product, the investment dollars, the complexity of the tip, and what kind of materials you want to bond together. So thank you for coming, I appreciate it.